What is going on Rocket Powered Sound Designers? In today's video, we're gonna be making a dirty dubstep machine gun bass and this is what it sounds like. Sounds really cool, sounds like all of those dirty dubstep songs, they have that classic machine gun bass and today, we're gonna be making that. So if you guys like that sound, make sure you just go ahead and click that like button. And also, if you're new here and you're not already subscribed, then what are you doing? Click that subscribe button. You're missing out on weekly serum tutorials. Serum tutorials, I think I mispronounced that. Um, if you're not already subscribed. But anyways, also guys, I don't know if you realize, but I've been going on daily uploads. I've been trying to upload every single day. So I'm just trying to see if I can do this and if it works out. Just kind of grinding out some videos, all quality of course. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna see how that goes. Anyways, enough with the side talk. Let's go ahead and jump right into today's video. So first things first, we're gonna start off with, I know, you guessed it, frequency modulation. Now guys, don't you worry, for the next coming tutorials, I'm gonna be switching it up a little bit with some ring modulation, some amplitude modulation, but just stick around for this video because it's still a fire ass tut. We're gonna go ahead and turn on FM from B, and you already know that we can't run FM from oscillator B if oscillator B is not turned on, so we go ahead and turn that on. Drop the level of oscillator B down to 0%, because now we're gonna be using oscillator A as the host for all the sound to be outputted through. And we're gonna go ahead and drop oscillator A, or oscillator B, <coughs> I'm sorry, wavetable to an evil long Reese. Now guys, if I were to just isolate this waveform, just get a listen. There's a lot going on. It's not the prettiest waveform, but you know what? It gets the job done and it sounds really dope in the long run. So we're gonna go ahead and just keep on going. FM is going to go around halfway here, and now we can actually start our modulation cycle. Now, first things first, we do want to type, or not type, we're gonna wanna stick oscillator A or B <laughs> octave up one. So now we do have a one pitch differential, which gives us a classic, oh, you know what? I'm sorry, actually, you know what? I'm so used to doing that, that I did that, and this bass doesn't actually use that. We're talking about machine guns, not metallic basses. Ah. I'm so silly. Anyways, we're gonna begin our mo modulation process by sticking on LFO number one, Uno, onto FM from B. And we could, we got a little shape going on here, okay? Um, this is what I ended up doing in the OG sound. I did a little something like this. And I actually put this on envelope. Now, if you guys didn't already watch my uh, LFO hacks in Serum, the seven things that you need to like no for using LFOs or a bunch of awesome tricks. I highly recommend you check that out. Link is in the description. Um, but basically one of the nice little hacks about the LFO is we can go ahead and do um, set loop back point here. And when we put this on envelope, now it's gonna play this through and then it's just gonna loop back on whatever point we set it at, which in this case I set it at right here. Pretty cool, right? Now we're actually gonna be modulating the level with this, oops, I don't know why I put that on wave tool position, but drop the level down and then we're gonna be modulating it all the way up, which creates that nice machine gun base that we're starting to go in towards. Um, into the filter section, we're just going to add in a high pass filter to shape the sound a little bit better. We just drop the cutoff and then modulate that, oops. Okay, and now we're talking. Turn up the resonance. See, my mouse is like, my cursor is sticky. Whenever I hold down, um, or I press the note. Oh yeah, turn up the fat. Whenever I press a note or like I move this, it'll like move up for a second. It messes up. So in this tutorial, you're probably wondering why I can't get everything exact. I have to go back and fix it. Like when I went like this, I'm like, oh, I gotta do this. It's not my fault. It's my mouse's fault. My computer's like lagging out right now, so whatever. Ah, let's get back to the video. So right now, if we play the sound, it doesn't sound like a machine gun, but the effects, you know, we have this, the base, you know, we have the foundation. This is where we're gonna be building off of, and the effects are going to be like our structure, okay? 
on top of our foundation. Let's go ahead and get started with the chorus. Now the chorus, this is the main reason why I really wanted to make this tutorial because the chorus is such a handy effect that and nobody touches it. No producers use it really. Um, I don't know why, it's because it's so low key. They're like, chorus, what the hell is that? That's like for guitars and shit, but it's actually for basses and stuff too. Come on. So we're gonna start off by dropping this rate down to zero hertz. And we're actually gonna be modulating to lane number one. If we turn up the mix all the way, this is my, here's a couple tricks that I like to do when I'm working inside of the course. I turn up the mix all the way and then here's a little filter. The filter's, um, you know, obviously cutting out all the frequencies here. So we wanna turn that up all the way. So virtually no frequencies are getting cut out of the, cut, the uh, chorus here. So now we get a full perspective on what we're actually working with here. I can't really hear too much right now, so what I'm going to end up doing is turn up the feedback, and we're going to modulate the feedback up. Sounds like a dying duck. Don't ask me how I know what that sounds like. <laughs> but uh, if we modulate the depth, or not modulate the depth, we move the depth. We started to find a harmonic uh, structure in here. That's going to be the basis of our sound. I think that sounds pretty good so far. We're going to move into the multiband compressor. So normally we just have a compressor, but we're just going to go ahead and select multiband, enter up the gain. Now we can turn on some distortion, turn up that tube all the way. Actually, we're going to move you to a hard clip. Perfect. Now into the filter, we can go ahead and go into our phases, or which is our flanger. We're going to go to a phaser 48 positive. Oops. 48 positive. Perfect. And from here, we can go ahead and modulate this. Now you're probably like, why are we doing this? Oh, hold on a sec. I'm so silly. We're going to modulate this down. Throw up the resin. So why specifically a phaser filter? Now guys, there's, like I said, you know, in sound design, I actually didn't say this, I don't know why I said like I said, but in sound design, you know, when I'm recreating basses or making cool stuff like this, some of the stuff is just not intended for a specific reason. You know, it just so happens that the phaser is cutting out the exact so, same frequencies that will actually make the sound sound better. So, you know, we're, we're just kind of doing this to make, increase the quality of the sound here, I suppose. Nothing too technical, honestly. And then same with the hyper, guys. Hyper is just here, same with the dimension, um, to add in a little bit of stereo width, nothing huge. And I'm sure you guys already know if you watch my videos, the reason why we don't turn up the size too high in the dimension, is because we get that garbage sound. So we like to turn that down very low, but turn up the mix a good amount. That way we really start to get that dimension inside of the sound. So that doesn't sound too good. Now we can go ahead and change around our settings and make it sound actually decent how we want it to. But guys, this is your base, this isn't mine. So it's completely up to you what you decide to make. See how I completely changed around what we are going for and I just spun it in a completely new direction. Now that's what you guys can do. I'm gonna leave you guys with that. Without further ado, I hope that you guys really liked this video because if you did, click that like button. It just helps me get an idea of how many of you guys actually like the sound. That way I can make some more of these tutorials. Just let me know in the comment section what you think, what you wanna see in the future. But without further ado, my name is Shane Gregoire and I will catch you guys in the next CRM tutorial.